Welcome to Geared Up. I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. Thanks for listening to GeekWire, everybody. We've got a lot to talk about this week. It's a big week. show today. It is a big show. I thought everything was going to kind of die down so after I. the iPhone 10 launch. Right. Nope. But in fact, we're going to be talking about Google's Nest, making mm-hmm. a big move into home security. Andrew is just back from San Francisco. Yes, that's where he, right. He went to the unveiling there. And then HTC, in other Google news, is selling a big chunk of its smartphone business to Google, which I'll be able to explain to you because it was extremely confusing the yes, way it rolled and out. Extremely expensive. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Uh, more than a billion dollars. We'll also go hands on with the first lamp to have Amazon Alexa inside. I, I got. That just a, sounds ridiculous. I, I, well, hey, it's true. And Andrew walked in. We'll show it a little bit later to folks watching on the live stream. It, it is cool looking. It's cool looking. It's and it's a first step for GE, which has that lamp called the Soul, and we'll explain what the heck is going on with the Apple Watch. Mm, Apple Watch Series Three comes That's out right. tomorrow, and there's a little, uh, little something going on. Little with something it. going on, yep. and also the big rumor about Amazon's move into smart glasses. So yes, a lot going on this week. All right, let's jump right into it. Andrew, you. Oh, by the way, for folks watching, by the way, for folks on the radio, don't forget you can subscribe at. Uh, geekwire.com slash geared up to everywhere you can check out the show, uh, including Facebook Live on GeekWire and also Andrew's YouTube ch- YouTube channel at youtube.com slash gear live. That's so right. Be sure to follow the show and also subscribe uh, in Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or wherever you listen. Okay, let's jump in with it. First thing is... What the oh, heck's going on? Claire, are you going to jump in there? Help us, Claire. Up oh, here we go. Oh, oh, we're going through it backwards. That must be stuck. Are you at the end? I, I think you're at the end. Let me see. Go all the way that this way. This is where the uh, <laughs> spoiler. All right, here, here we, we are. <laughs> okay, let's jump right into it with our discussion of Google's Nest. Let's right. hear it, Andrew. What happened? What? Give us the rundown on what Google's Nest announced. Yeah, announced Nest yesterday. had a uh, big event yesterday. Hashtag Nest event, where they basically announced what they've been working on. For the uh, last few years, actually. So I've been someone following Nest since they launched. About seven years ago, they launched with the smart thermostat, learning thermostat. Then they came out with the Nest Protect, which is a smoke and CO2 detector. And then they bought DropCam and released Nest Cam. But I didn't really give that to them because they bought the company and really, you know what I mean? So they didn't really make that. So I'm thinking, you know, I was just thinking this a couple weeks ago. This company's been around for seven years and hasn't released much. What the heck are they doing? They're spending all this money, R and D, and they aren't releasing any products. Yeah. Well, they answered that question yesterday with a bunch of product announcements, not just one. So Nest is getting into the home security business. That's pretty much the big deal of what was going on. If you take all the all the products they announced yesterday, you put them all together. You're basically building your own home security system, and they even allow you to add on 24-7 monitoring. So just to rewind a little bit, the reason this is such a big deal is that this is the company that essentially reinvented the thermostat. That's right. And then with DropCam, essentially got into the the whole camera business. Right. And so now they're getting into home security. Yes. So the big questions here would be price, right? And, yeah. And how they're going to go about this, because the... The whole idea with Nest is, hey, you can take something cool that other people might have been doing before, but you can almost Apple it. In other words, yeah. you can popularize it. Right. Is right. that what you see going on here? Yeah. And Nest, is, I mean, Nest is cool. Nest makes products that are modern and up to date or even futuristic. So if you're, if you're listening on the radio, behind us, we have an image. This is the Nest secure system. You've got the Nest hub here on, on right in the center of the picture. And what that is, is when you're walking out of the house... I don't know if you have a home <laughs> security system or not, but a lot of these, you set the alarm and it starts beeping like a countdown. And it's very like your heart rate starts going up. You're like, I got it. Oh, no, I forgot something in the house. But if I can, I run in in time and get it and run back out like with Nest, you set it and it has like a nice calming voice that says, hey, you have five minutes to leave. Whoa. It's not the big beep. beep no, beep, not at all. Beep. It just talks to you. Yeah. And then you have a little fob on your keychain and you can put that fob on your kids keys or their kids can have one if they accidentally throw it in a watch it doesn't matter it's fine and that fob is how you engage and disengage the hub or you can use the app so you can just use the app hey i have my phone just open up the app you walk out the front door then set the alarm like they have a bunch of ways that you can control this that's just for home monitoring um on the inside they have the sensors that go on your doors or windows 
Now, typically, like today, if you have your alarm set and then one of these things opens, your alarm's going to go off. Right. With Nest, on a per sensor basis, if you're on the inside the house, you can walk up to it and just touch the sensor, and then you can open that window or door without setting off the alarm. You don't have to go and worry about all this other stuff. So that's the alarm system. I love that because right now when I have to set my alarm to leave the house, I feel a little bit like Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's ridiculous. That's exactly what it is. So, um, And this, this is very, very much consistent with what Nest does because if you think of the smoke detector, the whole idea was the most annoying thing mm-hmm. about the smoke detector in your house now, if it's not a Nest, is it beeps and beeps and beeps. Right. The whole idea was you know, a very calming voice. Yeah. So it's very consistent with their approach. Exactly. So that's, the, that's called the Nest Secure. That is going to be launching at 499 bucks, or you can get it for 599 with an outdoor camera. Okay. So if you don't want the outdoor camera, four ninety nine. So do, do you have to subscribe to a monthly service? You to do be not to have to. So you can choose to, and they're partnering with a company to do 24-7 monitoring, which will be an extra fee, which they did not announce. But everything that happens on your Nest network gets sent to your phone. So if you don't want to hire a company and you just want to watch it yourself, you can do that. You can call the police right from the app if something crazy is happening. Hey, there's someone in my house. I don't know who it is. You know, They'll go right over there. Um, but they, they did more. That's not all they announced. Okay. So they also have the Nest IQ Outdoor. That's this right here, the Nest IQ Outdoor. So Nest IQ, Nest has a regular camera, and they have the Nest IQ camera. Right. The IQ camera is able to use the power of the cloud and machine learning to figure out you know, what's in view. So like, is that a dog or is that a person? It can figure out facial recognition, who that person is. So you can say, you know, set up, this is me, this is my spouse, these are our children. And then you can say, for example, hey, if you see someone in the house who is not any of these people, send me an alert. Or if you see my child in the house because I'm at work during these hours when they're supposed to be at school, send me an alert. So this is basically artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence outside your home, and this will tie in to your Nest Secure if you have the Nest Secure system. You don't have to have the security system to have the camera. They can work independently, but all this stuff will work together if you get them together. So is this outdoor camera the extra 100 bucks? No, the the extra hundred dollars is the regular Nest Cam Got outdoor. It. Got but it. But that sells for a hundred and ninety nine dollars, so you're getting it for half uh, price if you buy it as part if of the bundle. If you buy it as part of that, right? Nest Cam IQ is the one that does all the facial recognition and, and object recognition and stuff like that. And that is three forty nine th- on its own. On its own. Okay. Three forty nine, and then you have to to get all that facial stuff. You have to subscribe to the Nest Aware service. And how much is that? Um, I believe it starts nine ninety nine for the first device, and then five dollars for each additional device you add to it. Gotcha. Um, they also announced the Ring Hello. I mean, no, the Nest Hello. What Nest you, Hello. Was that a Freudian slip there? <laughs> it was because you ring the doorbell, but there's also a company called Ring, right? That makes a doorbell. But they, that is not this. That's not this. This is the Nest, Nest Hello. Hello. Nest Hello, and this is an, a doorbell that ties into your Nest system. Now, the cool thing about this doorbell is it actually looks like a doorbell. They light the button on the doorbell. I have a smart doorbell at home. No one ever presses it because you don't realize it's the doorbell. Gotcha. So this actually looks like a doorbell. It has a camera embedded in it. And the cool thing about the camera is that the field of view is such that it can see from the top of a person's head when they ring your bell to the floor so that you can see if you have packages. So if you have packages at Whoa. home, you'll see that. But if someone walks up to the doorbell, you'll see that. And here's another cool thing. There's a couple cool things. If someone walks up to your house and they don't ring the doorbell, within a number of seconds, you'll still get an alert. Hey, someone's at the door. Two, if you have a baby or dogs or whatever, you can set it to where like you have a nap time. So if someone rings the doorbell, you just get an alert on your phone. It doesn't ring in your Whoa. house. I need this with my neighbor. Isn't that my crazy? neighbor's I know, kid, you're, you're, Alex? You need that. Loves twenty four seven to ring 24/7. the doorbell. I'll, I'll Stop th- doing that, Alex. Well, I, you know, I should say he's kind of as he's gotten a little bit older. It hasn't gotten as frequent. Not but just, just he loves to then. ring the doorbell and run upstairs <laughs> when somebody's in the bath. That that is the issue. That's, that's weird. That's weird. Okay. Um, the other th- the cool thing that this thing can do, you can talk to people through it with yeah. your phone, but you can also have preset things that the doorbell will say okay so for example let's say you get an alert on your phone someone's at the door you can just tap on one of the phrases you want the doorbell to say like please leave the packages so right. just like whatever really or you know 
Who and, is it? And it's, and it's verbal. It's verbal. It will talk in its own voice to the person. Based on the text that Based you send to it. Based on the text that you it. send. Whoa. Isn't that cool? I, I'm on board with this. That's great. Okay. That's great. So, yeah, Nest is doing its thing. Um, some of this stuff comes out in November. Some of it comes out in next uh, Q1. But all of it is really cool. So, as you said, though, this is just part of a sort of an explosion of, of smart home devices, security cameras. There was even a rumor this past week that Amazon is going to be getting much more into the security business itself with security mm-hmm. devices. Where does Nest stack up against Ring and all the others in the, in the market? Well, with all this stuff... Um, they are doing great. I mean, this is, I don't know that there's any company that's beating them right now. We didn't even get into all this stuff. There's, a, there's a lock. There's a door lock, a smart door lock that they have now that when you open, when you unlock the door with your code, it disables your security system. Like, there's so much that they're doing that's all integrated together that no one else. It, it is, is pretty spendy, though. It is spendy, but you don't have to do it all at once. You can buy it piecemeal. And some of these things, you can, you know, you want to start with the camera, start with the camera. The camera, they're updating with a software update to become just like a Google Home with Google Assistant built Whoa, in. Whoa, okay. Talk to the camera. So Technology, man. Thing. This That's stuff's right. amazing. All right, you're listening to Geared Up on GeekWire. We'll be right back with a discussion of another big move made by Google this past week. Thanks for listening to GeekWire on Cairo Radio, 97.3 FM. We'll be right back. All right, hey. Thanks, Facebook Live, for hanging in there on our audio issues. Lisa. Are we an audio issue? Can people hear us? No, can you? Oh, people it's can fixed hear us. Now. All right. Yes, All right, Lisa good. was our troubleshooter. She was our beta tester. And uh, Lisa, Lisa, if you want to send me uh, an email with your shirt size, I will get a GeekWire shirt in the mail to you oh. for, for your role as a, a beta you. tester. Look so. at you. All right. Todd at GeekWire.com. There you go. All right. She can hear us. Any questions, Lisa, on the Facebook Live feed? How about you on uh Someone YouTube. said they're glad we're live and we couldn't edit out the blooper of you trying to get the PowerPoint yes. working. Yeah. Hey, that's just th- that's <laughs> going to happen many times. Yes. Is it worth it to upgrade from the six plus to the eight plus? Aren't you a six plus guy? I am. A, that's exactly my question right now, Andrew. Please answer that. Oh, you don't have. I thought <laughs> you were going to answer the question. Uh, yes, I think you can easily. Uh, it's a good. The eight and eight plus series are good upgrades. Um, if you like the form factor of the six plus, it may behoove you to go to the 8 plus rather than the 10. Yeah. Uh, Lisa says, no comments, just a complaint about the Wi-Fi dropping Nest cams. Does that happen to you? Mm, that I, I assume those are the older ones. Those are the older ones. Because the new ones, ones they, just, they just released two, like a new one just a couple months ago. Um, and they just announced another new one yesterday. So it may be the Dropbox, uh, you know, the, the changeover from the Dropbox stuff. I mean, drop cam Drop cam stuff. stuff, yeah. Drop cam stuff, yeah. Ooh, don't edit that out either. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> How about any, any other I made two mistakes. Here? No. I want a geared up shirt. Why don't we have geared up shirts? Let's, that, 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 it, ask and it shall happen. We're making it happen. <laughs> and because you recommended it, we'll get you one for free. Yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed <laughs> to say that. Yeah, for <laughs> that that's Reza. 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 Reza okay, Malayeri. Okay, Reza record. All right. Let's jump back in with segment number two. So in this segment, we're going to be talking about and explaining, hopefully, uh, HTC's kind of twisted deal with Google. Crazy deal, yeah. In the smartphone business, and then uh, should we do in this segment the um, the soul, or should we save that? All right. Yeah. How about if we talk in this segment about the uh, the smart glasses on Alexa too? All right. Yeah, Alexa stuff all together. Here, hold hold on just for a second here. Hitting it with some dead air right now. Yeah, Scott. I know, I know. We're totally getting there. Where is that it's story? Not good TV Where is talk. that story? Oh, here it is. I got it. Okay. All right. Let's jump into it. Okay. An SD card? No. <laughs> We're doing great today. <laughs> All great. of us. Yep. <laughs> Welcome back to Geared Up on GeekWire. I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. Okay, so Andrew, there was this rumor this past week that HTC, the smartphone maker based right. in Taiwan, with a very sizable presence in Seattle, in Pioneer Square, mm-hmm. their North American Correct. headquarters, used to be in Bellevue. We found out this week they've actually moved to Pioneer Square. Yeah. Uh, there was a rumor that HTC was just going to be sold to Google. Right. Turns out— HTC, w- who makes the Google Pixel, the exactly. current Google Pixel, 
So there is a, that would be why Google would be interested. Absolutely. So it turns out that what the deal is, it's a $1.1 billion deal. And through that deal, Google is essentially going to be taking on a large chunk of HTC's business. What does that mean? And specifically, they are going to be bringing on about 2,000 employees who work on the Pixel hardware. But so they will become Google employees? Exactly. They remain, okay. They're going to become Google employees. It's essentially an acquisition of a chunk of HTC's smartphone okay. business. They will essentially keep developing the Pixel, but in-house mm -hmm. for Google rather than doing it as a third party at HTC. So that means it becomes Google's in-house made phone. Right. HTC is no longer officially the maker. Google's making it yes. by acquiring these employees. Exactly. Okay. And so at the same time, uh, separate from the $1.1 billion that Google is paying for those assets, for those employees and that team and, and all that hardware development, it's also taking a long-term license, an intellectual property license, to a lot of the underlying technology okay. to, make, to continue making the Pixel phone. But which I saw was un not exclusive, though. Right. Exactly. So someone else could say, hey, we also want to pay for the access to that. To those licenses, yes. A lot of this is about patent protection, too. Okay. So in other words, that's one of the reasons Google initially bought Motorola was to make sure that they had enough IP protection right. to defend themselves and to actually, in some cases, sue others if they needed to. Yes. So um, so that, that whole situation... That worked out well. <laughs> yeah, right. And so just a couple of years later, they ended up selling Motorola Mobility to Lenovo. So Google has had a bit of a mixed history here with its own hardware development. It's going to be fascinating to see how this turns out. I want to, though, take a step back because HTC is an interesting company in and of itself. Yeah. It was really a pioneer in smartphones. It was one of the first companies to get on board with Microsoft's Windows Mobile. Yep. It then made a big transition to Android, but they have struggled to keep pace with Samsung in particular in the Android market. Where do you, s and, and, and we should say HTC is going to keep making its own phones. Which like, is also like strange. So, but not with the people who are experts at making the phones because those phone experts are going to Google. So they're going to have to rehire people to make phones. There must be some natural segmentation inside their business that makes this make sense. I guess. From what I understand, it's about 2,000 going to Google and about 2,000 remaining on. Okay. okay. So they have a pretty sizable base to continue to work with. But things like the U11, right? Yep. That's the new phone that you can sort of squeeze. It's yep. the first phone with kind of native Alexa integration where right. you can theoretically at least be able to invoke Alexa. Right. We, we, we got it to work most, most of the it, time. Yes. Yeah. So where does this leave HTC, do you think? Oh, man, I don't... Well, first of all, HTC also does the Vive. Oh, that's right. They are really at the forefront, at least in current day, forefront of virtual reality. I think the Vive is better than... You like what's the, the other one? The Rift. Oh, the, the you can't even remember Rift. the name. Yeah, yeah like they, they make the, the Vive in conjunction with right. Valve. Think, it's yeah. got a lot of connections to Steam because of that, right, and so right. it's, it's got great content. Oculus Rift had to play some catch-up to, to get to where the Vive is. We haven't seen second generation from, from either company, but HTC is really good there, so that's another part of their business where they're you know very successful. The phones, they make great phones. They make great phones. It's just the market isn't as aware of HTC as they are of Samsung. It's basically Samsung and Apple and then everybody else. That's just how the market is in the United States. So um, Google is powerful enough to kind of force the Pixel into the market. I mean, if they want to, they can put the Pixel front and center right on Google.com, one of the most visited websites in the world. Um, HTC doesn't have that power. So, you know, aside from Google being able to come in, which I think they will be able to, I, I don't know how a company like HTC or even an LG, which also makes great hardware, can come in and really make a big dent uh, in the market where Samsung has really kind of cornered it on Android. It seems like Samsung really has mastered the branding in a lot of ways. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the Galaxy and everything, you know, extends from the Galaxy, whereas HTC, it feels like it's been a little bit all over the place. Like, if you were to ask the random person on the street what the flagship HTC phone was, oh, yeah, they they'd know. be like, yeah. But if you said, hey, do you, have you ever heard of the Samsung Galaxy or what's right. Samsung's phone? Like, a lot of people would Absolutely. know. Absolutely. And Samsung, you know, in, in, my est in my opinion, you know, they lost a couple of lawsuits to Apple due to the design patents. And, you know, a lot of people were getting caught up in the fanboyism of Android and Samsung and Apple, who goes first and what. And if you just step back from that and just see Samsung was smart enough to say, okay, everybody's gravitating towards this iPhone. We're going to start making our phones early on look like that, but an Android version. 
and we might get sued and we may owe Apple some money. And they did end up, I believe they ended up owing Apple roughly a billion dollars. I think it was a little less than that. But it cost Samsung a billion dollars to become the juggernaut. It's, it's worth paying that. It's worth doing that. It was worth it because Apple and Samsung are the only two smartphone companies that are making a consistent profit and everybody else loses money. So cost um, of doing business. As that's they right. Say. Exactly. And yep. it, w- it was a smart move. Um, so I think, I think this deal is way better for Google than it is for HTC because now Google is paying one bill, roughly a billion dollars to try and get to the forefront of the smartphone market. And I think with the pixel, um, pixel branding is really good. People like Google. It feels like you're getting the phone directly from the source because Apple's a large part of Apple's success is the fact that they make the hardware and the software of this phone. And now Google will be able to do the same thing. That's, That's good. Yeah, really interesting stuff. Okay, here in the final few minutes of this segment, I want to talk about the rumor. This yep. is not an actual confirmed report, but the rumor that Amazon is working on its own pair of glasses yeah. with Alexa inside. Now, are these AR glasses? They. It's not clear. Now, this was a report by the Financial Times. So here's how the story went out. It focused on all of the Alexa stuff. And then at the end, it said, and it's possible that it Mm -hmm. may be some kind of AR glasses. I hope it's not. You hope it's not. You just want you just want to talk to Alexa in your glasses, in your regular glasses. Yes. That is where I think Amazon went really too far with the Fire Phone. They tried to put all this fancy stuff (laughs) in there. Just give me something really cool and innovative. We already have Alexa all over the house. So the whole idea though is you're walking around the street, you're driving in your car, and you know, you just basically invoke Alexa and you can get it through bone induction. In other words, what are you gonna ask Alexa to do? Alexa, give me driving directions. Give me walking directions. Alexa, what's that? What's that thing over there? Uh, but how does she know what that thing that, over there that, is? So that's where without the AR it being would be AR. interesting. That's you're right. That's that is absolutely true. But if you could say, it, it certainly would take a little bit of manual uh, intervention to say, "Hey, Alexa, what is the house at one two three X Y Z Street?" Versus yeah, it's too much work, though. Yeah. Well, I think that it would be better to do that. I, I'd rather see them take it in stages. Come out first with some smart glasses with just audio controls mm-hmm. and the ability to hear it. And that is the other thing. So it's like my famous bike helmet on Geared Up. <laughs> it's infamous. bone. It, Infamous, yeah. It's it's a it's bone induction, so right. you don't have to wear uh, earbuds or headphones right. to be able to hear the and sound. And no one else around you hears it. Uh, in my experience, at least with my helmet, my bike helmet, people when you stop at a stoplight with other what? cyclists, they look over like, "What the heck are you doing?" Because they can hear you, the podcast you're listening to. I don't to think they can hear it. I think they're just looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is oh, this I think it's doing? the best. What it's is the, the best, isn't it? That's exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> we did a great race, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> of, of a bike versus all this. That's a whole other story. Though. Wow. All right. Hey, we've got a lot more to talk about, including another interesting Alexa device. Mm-hmm. If you want to hear our full conversation and you're listening on the radio, just go to geekwire.com and click on the podcast. Just go to geekwire.com slash geared up and find this episode of the show. We'll be right back on GeekWire on Cairo Radio 97.3 FM. Thanks for listening to GeekWire, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. We'll talk to you next time on Cairo Radio 97.3 FM. All right, we'll be right back on Geared Up. I think people watching are like, what the hell was that? Yeah, so, so if you're he's watching. Ending <laughs> the, he's ending the podcast. No, he's ending the radio show because we're also on the radio. But we also continue recording to do the podcast, So, which is what you're going to see now. The next segment is the podcast segment. So we had to record an ending for the radio and an, an ending of the Nobody segment cares. for the podcast. Yeah, they don't care. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> Just... It's just some random dude yelling things into a mic. This. <laughs> this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Are we back? Oh, wait. So in this segment, we've got this and the Apple Watch. That's right. Okay. All right. Welcome back to Geared Up. This is going to be a fun one, Andrew. I've yeah, got something I'm, I'm fun. I'm very intrigued. So a fun, fun device sitting here on the table in front of us. This it makes me look good, though. I see the lighting on this on the on the. It's video beautiful. Feed. It's beautiful. It's giving you that kind of circular image in your in your uh, yeah. eyeballs. It's there. almost like a pregnancy glow that I have going <laughs> on right now. So <laughs> if you're wondering what the heck we're talking about, on the table in front of us is a device called the GE Soul. Okay. As in solar or sun. GE. GE that, that's makes a blast this device. From the past. Exactly. How often do you hear that name? So this is an Alexa device unto itself. Oops. Oh wow. You and just you just turned it on. So I know a lot of folks So a lot of okay. folks are familiar with the ability to control 
smart lights around the house using something like an Echo or, yeah. or other Alexa devices. But this, you, you have a smart light attached to it, but in the base is an Alexa device. So you can it's do on. all sorts of things. So like just an example. Alexa, what's the weather in Seattle? In Seattle, it's 54 degrees with cloudy skies. Today, Not bad. you can look for clouds and showers with a high of 63 degrees and a low of 48 degrees. So that gives you a sense. You can do things like your flash briefings. You can get music. The music is not as It'll good. It'll play music? It'll play music, yeah. Wow. It, it's more like the Echo Dot in that way. Right, right, the, but the, still. Yeah, you got the, the speakers right around the bottom. It basically does everything. You can access skills, you know, play Jeopardy, whatever the heck you want to do. I assume you can also turn the light lamp yes. on and off. So you can say, Alexa, turn off soul light. So it just turned off the ring of light. You can say, Alexa, turn soul to warm white. I don't think she heard me. What the, what the hell, Alexa? I should say this is a pre-production unit that we've got here. Pre-pro, okay. Sorry, I don't know that one. Alexa, turn soul light on. There, there it is. is. All right. Took a minute. Okay, so it just came on. Alexa, turn soul to warm white. There it is. So it turns Ooh. a little more orange. It's got wow. five shades of white, no color on the outer ring. Okay. But here's a cool thing. On the inner ring, you see that blue and the red light? Yes. That's a clock. So if you oh. look at it from the front, it's the hour hand and the minute hand. Oh. Oh, not Clever, bad. Ace. Not now, bad. now you're 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 witnessing the flaw in this approach, Andrew, as someone who's sitting behind the That's light right. because it's giving you the wrong time of day. Yes. But it's kind of a cool concept. Uh, and how, how about this, Alexa? Set a timer for thirty seconds. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Can you try again? Alexa, set a timer for thirty seconds. Thirty seconds, thirty more. Okay. So see what it's going to do here? Gonna it's going to count it down oh, inside the ring look inside of okay. the light. So that's okay. basically, th that's the gist. It does a bunch of other different things, but it's a cool light. It is $200. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not a cheap light. Would you buy that? So here's the reason. For this one, I would not. It, it can be a little harsh uh, to the naked eye and without mm -hmm. a bulb. Um, it, it actually is kind of, uh, you know, basically... It, it, it's a novelty to me yeah. right now. It's kind of like a, a little There's bit. A timer. Alexa, turn off timer. Turn off timer. Okay. So it, it's interesting. I love the concept. I asked them, hey, could I get a brighter light with a lampshade on it? I'd, right. I'd prefer something like that, actually, to this. Get this thing out of here. It looks horrible. Okay. The <laughs> white. The, the, <laughs> the shade of the, light. Oh, that shade of light. Okay. All right, so that is the soul light. I like it. I, I did a I did a like a full video of this, by the way, that you can check I out heard. at Geekwire. Yes. Where can people see this video? They, they can check it out at Geekwire.com. This is your first video. This is oh, your first I've soul done light. a few. I've you done a few. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. I would <laughs> 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 so interesting. Like, here's what I like about this. I like the concept of Alexa going into other devices. Yes, definitely. And you know, like I I'd love to just talk to my washing machine, Alexa. Yep. Start a Absolutely. start a load. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I like that whole concept and the whole idea of tethering it to the Echo devices. It can get to be a little much, mm -hmm. um, you know, like in my, oh, yeah, the, it keeps said, and we're setting off many Alexa. Yes, that's right. Did you see the South Park thing? Yes, I was watching it while I had my Alexa yes. and Google Homes in my house and everything was going off. Yeah, they purposely they did talking. an episode an episode <laughs> to make people's <laughs> how right. brilliant. We should have done that. That was great. That was great. <laughs> All right. So that is the sole device. So uh, f for uh, folks who are uh, listening on the podcast, the next item we want to talk about is the Apple Watch. Okay, Apple Watch Series 3 with LTE. That's right. So what happened this past week with the Apple Watch, Andrew? Well, what happened was Apple, you know, they released products. The Apple Watch Series 3 is coming out tomorrow. There is a Series 3 with LTE and one without. And um, basically LTE means your Apple Watch on its own has cell a cellular connection built in. So optionally you can connect it to your cell phone plan. And this is the one, if you remember from the Apple event, they had somebody out on a stand-up paddleboard. Yes, in, Lauren Good. In, like, uh, was San Francisco Bay, I guess? Yeah, 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 yeah. And she was, like, holding the watch kind of at, 
mid chest level. Yes. Right. Yes. And she was able to talk. Talk and listen. Yes. Yes. And it picked her up from that there. Right. So it's pretty cool. You don't need the phone. You don't need the phone. Your phone. Theoretically. You don't need the phone on you. Right. But you do need to have a, an iPhone plan. To, to set it up. Yes, to get everything set up. So what happened was they send these devices out to reviewers early so that they can have uh, the reviews drop a couple days before they come out. So the watch comes out tomorrow. Reviews dropped. It was either yesterday or the day before. Um, and what a lot of reviewers found was that the LTE connection was not that reliable. It was dropping when they were on the go or it just wouldn't connect at all when they were on the go. And um, a lot of the reviewers didn't put the work in. I mean, this is the problem I have the tech industry, by the way. If you're going to call yourself a tech journalist and you're trying to educate people, put the work in and do your research on products before so, telling people what the product is. So we're talking are. about the, the, the New York Times or the, the, the Wall yeah. Street Journal, oh, Verge. So, the Ver yeah. so wait, what did they not do right? Shouldn't it just work, Andrew? Come it on. Should, no, it absolutely should just work because Apple also made a mistake, and it's an embarrassing mistake that they made. The bug that – so they were saying that LTE in the Apple Watch isn't working properly. That's what these journalists were saying. The problem was they didn't look and realize that their watch wasn't connected to LTE at all. It was connected to Wi-Fi. Oh, is that really what happened? And here's the problem. With your phone and now with the watch by extension, have you ever gone to a Starbucks or a McDonald's or a hotel and connected to Wi-Fi? A lot of times in these places, you connect to Wi-Fi, and the first thing it does is it brings up a page where you have to like do a manual Wi-Fi login. Yeah. You have to put in yeah, like your hotel room name or your email or something. You, like you're agreeing sure. to their terms to use your Wi-Fi. The watch was connecting to those same types of Wi-Fi hotspots, but on the watch, there's no interface to then agree. It can't pull up a web page on the watch. So the watch is connected to the Wi-Fi, but it's not seeing that you know authentication layer of course not it's it's, a, it's watch. a watch exactly so it's connected to wi-fi and when the watch is connected to wi-fi it is not using lte the watch will first look for your phone and use your phone's connection if the phone's not around then it'll look for wi-fi and if wi-fi is not available then it connects to lte that's to save battery so it's going in descending order of what uses the most battery so apple should have caught this and said the watch should not connect to Open hotspots that require this sort of authentication. That should have been the way that the software was written. Absolutely. But as a journalist, you should look and see. Like, is it on LTE or not? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you're on Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi is not working, like that's pretty much it. So the watch. So Apple says this is a bug. Um, they are going to fix it in a software update. So thankfully, it's not about the LTE chip inside the watch not working properly. The problem is software. They're going to release an update to address this. I don't think the update's going to be available day one for tomorrow, but it, at, at the very least, we have the answer. So if you see that happening, if you pick up an Apple Watch and you, and you see that happening, just swipe up to go to the control center and disable Wi-Fi. So if you're out on the go and you don't want to connect to any Wi-Fi networks when you're on the go, just disable Wi-Fi, and that'll take care of that problem while you're using your Apple Watch until that first update comes out. Here is the statement that Apple put out. We have discovered that when Apple Watch Series 3 joins unauthenticated Wi-Fi networks without connectivity, it may at times prevent the watch from using cellular. We're investigating a fi fix for a future software release. This seems like a switch they got to flip. I mean, that, yeah. this is not a major engineering problem. Right, but the problem is that this same thing has happened on iPhones for ever it's just the iphone will get that will be able to show that screen but the phone shouldn't do it either so just hopefully they fix it for the phone and for watches um, but the other thing while we're on topic because I'm, I'm, I'm ranting about people out there trying to educate the, con the the consumer the readers the viewers i'm here to educate you i'm not here to jump on a bandwagon so the other thing that people noticed was the new iphone 8 8 plus and iphone 10 support fast charging right you know what fast charging is no Okay, so you use a USB-C power delivery, and basically, if you can go from a dead phone to 50% charge in 30 minutes. Right. So it's, it's using a higher wattage, basically. It supports this. Um, the only thing that Apple sells themselves, the only power brick that they sell that supports that, costs $75, and it's a, it's a MacBook charger. So a lot of journalists jumped on this, and they were saying, in order to fast charge your iPhone, you need to pay Apple $75 for this charger and $20 for this cable, $25 for this cable. 
it, it's between eighty five and a hundred dollars to wireless to not wireless to to fast charge your iPhone. Apple, what are you doing? And they didn't do the research to just go on Amazon, which I did this morning. You don't have to buy a MacBook charger. You can buy a fifteen dollar charger, and you can buy a five dollar cable, and for twenty dollars, you can fast charge your iPhone eight, eight plus, or ten. But they don't do the research, Todd. Well, they're not doing the research. You're miseducating when you go when you tell your viewer or your reader that it costs eighty five dollars minimum to fa- to fast charge their iPhone. They're just not going to fast charge their iPhone. You're not giving them the alternative so that they say, "Oh, I can go here and do the, I can get the same functionality by buying this." Okay, I just want it to fast charge. That sounds right. awesome. Right, it <laughs> charges much that. faster. Yes. So, but there's also the wireless charger. You're gonna go, are you gonna are you a wireless charger or are you a fast charger? I, so I've had some Nokia devices in the past with wireless charging, and I found them to be a little bit more of a pain in the butt. Than, I think that sounds like you're talking worthwhile. about like ten years ago or something. <laughs> it was like it was like one of those Microsoft Nokia, oh, like, like, like the Lumia, ago. the Lumia era. Okay. But they, I mean, they were pioneering. They were, you know, using the, yeah, the yeah, wireless yeah. charging pad, and right. so at any rate, I. The wireless charging is not a big selling point to me. I fast do like charging the, is. the fast charging. Yes, okay. absolutely. For me personally, yeah, I'm pretty convinced I'm getting the ten. I'm mm. pretty convinced. I've almost convinced my wife to get it because I showed her, "Hey, look, you can have a larger screen mm-hmm. than on my iPhone 6s Plus, right? And it's a smaller device. Holy cow! That's the biggest draw to me. I hate the size of my iPhone 7 Plus. I hate the size of this. The reason I picked this over the regular seven is because it has the dual cameras. And, and it's more RAM. So I want the small device with that same functionality. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Okay, so it's been a week since the iPhone 10 unveiling. Yes. We've got the iPhone 8 coming out. What should we know? The one thing that you should know that I didn't get to last week. So last week, we went live like pretty much right after Apple went. Yeah, was it done, was a hot right? take, man. And one of the things you asked me before we got into iPhone 10 was, what should people know about the iPhone 8? I didn't really have an answer. I was like, not much like 10 is the big thing um this past week i did a video called is eight better than 10 because after having you know with these keynotes and we're all trying to take our notes and everything i usually go home and watch it again yes uh so i can actually see what the hell i missed right and the thing people need to know about the iphone 8 and 8 plus especially the 8 plus is there is so much feature parity with the iphone 10 oh if you take away the screen and you take away the front camera, right? That that A11 Bionic processor, that's in there. Three gigabytes of RAM, it's in there. The dual camera on the back is in there. The new portrait lighting mode, that's in there too. Three gig, like all this. There's the eight and the X are more similar than they are different. Right. And so, if you want to get the same performance, in fact, if you want better performance, I suspect the eight will be faster than the 10 really and here's why the 8 has the smallest screen with the least pixels Uh. so the processor doesn't have to worry about pushing a much higher um pixel density and then the 8 plus is more than the 8 but it's still less pixel density than the 10 and that's the main thing it's pushing all those pixels on the display so you'll have a better performing phone if you go 8 or 8 plus than you will with the 10 battery life too Battery life is going to be better on the 8 Plus than on the 10. Because it's a larger battery? Larger battery. So I believe it's uh, you have the 8, and then the 10 will have two hours more battery life than the 8, but then the 8 Plus will have an additional one-hour battery life. Over the 10. Over the 10. Ah. So now it becomes what is more important to you? Is the more futuristic, like the Face ID, the OLED display, a um, little bit better, like the dual optical image stabilization on the back camera and the, and the you know, more that front array allowing you to do like selfie portrait mode is that more important to you is that worth two hundred dollars more to you what about the animoji because i really Animoji's really want to do that oh, i know that's all you animoji <laughs> is all you all day every day um that is this only is, on the 10 okay i'm getting the 10 and that is i'm going to try interacting with my six-year-old daughter f- only through animoji for like a month no, and forever. then i'm going to write Just about from it. that one forever yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think i think it might be more effective <laughs> it probably will be. It probably will be. So if you missed that video, you can go to youtube.com slash gear live. You'll see. So I did one video showing why you'd want to buy the eight over the 10 and then another video showing why you'd want the 10 over the eight. And there are pros and cons to both. The eight is a bigger deal than I originally um, implied last week. Wireless charging is there as well. Like there's a, yeah. there's a lot of feature parity. So I want to conclude here, Andrew, with a bit of a teaser. It's going to be super vague. 
Andrew, Do I know what it is? Andrew and I are going Uh-oh. to an event together next week, and we can't yeah. talk about it. And we can't a, talk it's about it. It's been a while since we've been to an event together. I know. And we've we never gone to an event it. together on the same team. Yes. It's our first event that we're going to the same team. Can't talk about it other than to let you know there will be an event. And and we're going to it. And we're going to it. That's it. Don't say anything more. How Don't get me in trouble. a different teaser? A different topic? A different topic? We have, we have a, a, a very exciting device. That's on our way, on the way on to us. On its way. To that us. we can't tell you about yet. We've been we've been like working it working it yeah, behind the scenes. Right. You and me, that's we're right. a good team on we're that email thing. We're trying to do some good thing. stuff for you guys. We have some really cool stuff coming up. I got to tell you, Andrew is one of the best emailers I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, in order to make it as an entrepreneur in this crazy industry, you need to know how to <laughs> drop emails and get it, attention. Can I put that as like a LinkedIn skill for you? <laughs> this guy, this guy kills it on email. <laughs> hey. I'm not. I'm not even. I just taught myself that. I didn't even. I didn't even go to business school. I just. Hey, you got. You have to know how to sell yourself. Excellent. All right. With that, until next time, I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. You're listening to Geared Up on GeekWire. Thanks, everybody.